What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and today we're checking out the LG V30. This is LG's top-end flagship for 2017, and it brings some familiar traits from some other flagships, but adds quite a few others as well. And it's definitely one of my favorite Android phones I've reviewed this year, so I'm gonna go in-depth and explore all of its features. It goes without saying that the design and feature inspiration for the LG V30 is the Galaxy S8. It's a really nice looking phone, complete with an OLED display that goes almost to the edges of the phone. It even wraps around just slightly, but it's not quite as dramatic as it is on the Galaxy S8. But this display is a huge improvement over the LCD display from the V20 or the G6. So this is a six inch quad HD plus display. Now this gives us a resolution of 1440 by 2880, so it's a taller display, very similar to the Galaxy S8, with a 537 PPI pixel density. This is a fantastically bright and vivid display. It's one of the best I've used. It's even slightly better and brighter than the one on the Galaxy S8. To me, it looks like it has a wider color gamut, so although it looks a bit warmer compared to the Galaxy S8, it looks a bit more accurate with more vibrant colors. So this phone is covered in Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and back, and it's rimmed in this polished metal frame frame with some antenna brakes. Very nice looking phone and it feels great in the hand with this nice rounded symmetrical surface. So it feels very smooth and comfortable to grip. It's much less boxy than something like the uh, G6 and certainly much more compact than the large and bulky V20 from last year. Fans of the V10 and V20 might be disappointed that we no longer have a swappable battery or a metal design. Instead, this glass design gives us wireless charging for the first time on the V series, which I think is a worthy trade off. And of course, we also have Quick Charge 3.0 via the USB port, so you can quickly recharge the internal battery, which is 3,300 milliamp hours. One of the features that is missing here from the LG V20 is the second screen, but that's been replaced with a floating bar with most of the same features on both the lock screen and the home screen, and we're gonna go in depth and explore that later. The front facing camera is five megapixels with an F2.2 aperture, which is a fairly wide angle lens. So you're able to get a lot in your shot pretty easily. Now this only records up to 1080p, so you won't find quad HD or even 4K here. So along the left side, we have our individual volume controls. Along the right side, we have a combination nano SIM tray and micro SD card slot, which does support up to two terabytes. If you look closely at that SIM tray, you'll see another feature that's very welcome, which is water resistance. So there's actually a gasket surrounding the edge of it, which keeps water out. In fact, it's IP68 rated like a lot of other high-end smartphones today, which means you can submerge this up to 1.5 meters of water for 30 minutes. Not only is this IP68 rated, it's also military standard 810G rated, which means it's designed to survive extreme environmental conditions and shock. Down below, we have a USB-C port for fast charging, along with one of the microphones and a speaker. So this is a single mono speaker, but it's tuned very well. So it's loud and clear and not quite as lopsided as you might expect with a side facing speaker, but it is pretty easy to muffle when you're handling the phone, especially for gaming. Not only does this phone retain the headphone jack at the top of the phone, but this is also once again, a hi-fi quad DAC which is able to use 32-bit processing to improve the playback performance over wired audio. This phone also comes with a control panel, so you can customize your experience, and this can automatically adapt the audio quality for whatever set of headphones or speakers you have plugged into it. Another big story with this phone is biometrics. So of course, we have a fingerprint sensor on the back in a very convenient location. This button is also the sleep-wake power button, as it always has been with recent LG phones. This sensor is much faster and much more reliable and very easy to find on the back of the phone without having to look at it. But new for LG is face recognition and voice recognition. So you can actually use your face to unlock your phone. And the difference with the LG phone versus the Samsung phone is that the phone does not have to be woken up to recognize your face. All you have to do is lift the phone to your face, but generally it's not as secure, reliable, or quick as using your finger to unlock it. We also have voice Computer. unlock. So you can actually wake up your phone just by speaking a trained command. In my case, Computer. Once again, we have a dual camera setup. LG is one of the first to add dual cameras on their phones, but LG's approach is still quite unique. We have a standard camera and a wide angle camera. Personally, I think I prefer the wide angle camera over a telephoto camera, just because it's very useful, especially in a tight shot. So for example, if you wanna get a full view of a room, Really, there is no other way to do it without a wide angle lens. And you can also get some pretty dramatic shots with that wide angle lens. 
So the main camera here is 16 megapixels with a huge f1.6 aperture. That lets a lot of light in this camera. We also have full optical image stabilization along with laser and phase detection autofocus. You'll find those lasers right next to the camera module underneath the LED flash. The wide angle camera is 13 megapixels with an f1.9 aperture. Now the great thing here is that you can seamlessly switch between these cameras and you can record 4K video in either camera. One of the things that makes this camera stand out right away in my testing is its 10-bit HDR image sensor which means it's able to preserve a lot more color detail, especially in HDR images. So any HDR image, especially with a lot of contrast, comes out extremely clear with a lot of detail and a lot of color. Normally HDR likes to really wash out colors to bring up detail, but in this case, images always come out looking perfect. So I'm really impressed overall. Even though this is an early production device, I'm really excited by what I'm seeing with this camera, especially 4K video. It's very smooth, especially handheld video is very smooth. And with laser AF and face detection autofocus, it seems to be able to find focus very smoothly and quickly. And because this has a very shallow depth of field with that f1.6 aperture, it's very important for that system to work just because the camera has to move around quite a bit to find focus and it's working flawlessly flawlessly so far. Images come out extremely clear and detailed without much distortion or noise. And the color here is amazing. This is one of the best cameras in terms of color I've ever tested. So you can really just point this camera anywhere, especially with HDR on, and you get excellent images. This also extends to low light. With that f1.6 aperture, this lets a lot of light into the camera, and it's able to preserve a lot of color detail, which is normally washed out in longer exposures or with higher sensitivity. The spec sheet for the LG V30 is a pretty familiar one. We have a Snapdragon 835 and an Adreno 540 GPU, like most flagship smart phones this year. We also get 64 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM, or if you go for the V30 Plus, we get 120 gigs of storage, again with 4 gigs of RAM. So next up, I just want to dig into this interface, and as always, there's a lot to talk about right on the lock screen. So we have this ambient display showing us our current date and time, as well as our notifications up top. But very similar to the second display of the LG V10 and V20, we also have this up here with this little panel. So we can actually slide across to access very similar features, such as quick access to the camera app, the LED flash, the memo app, and much more. Now we can wake up the screen by double tapping in, and we have quick access to our phone dialer or the camera app. And of course you can customize this with additional apps down below as well. Now we can use the fingerprint sensor, which is extremely fast to unlock the device, or we can use face unlock. We can use both of them simultaneously. So if face unlock doesn't work for you, you can just go right to the fingerprint sensor, which is extremely quick. We also have some quick actions from the lock screen. So we can double tap the volume down key to get into the camera app or double press the volume up key to get into the memo app. So one of the biggest changes since the LG V20 is the elimination of the second display and its replacement, which is called the floating bar. Now, I actually think it's a better design just because this means I can move this around to different locations on the screen. It's not permanently locked to the top of the display, which is quite far away for a one-handed grip. So now I can move it to either side like so. Most of the same features are here, such as our quick contacts, uh, and then you can hide it by tapping the arrow. We can swipe across here to get to other features like our memo app, the calendar, our contacts, and you can jump to the floating bar settings. So if you jump to that, you can see some of the panels you can turn on and off, or you can just turn off the floating bar entirely. We also get this screen capture tool belt. So we have a number of tools we can use. So we can do a screen grab of whatever we're looking at, and then we can mark it up and save it. We also have scroll capture. So this will scroll through a website or a list so you can capture the entire thing. We also have GIF capture. So this will give us a window. We can hover over a video, and then we can record a GIF. And this will record for up to 15 seconds and then we can replay it back. So if I go to the gallery app, I'll find GIF capture here. I can play this, take a look at how it worked out. Now, if you wanna get rid of the floating bar, what you can do is drag it to the top and take it up to remove, and this will remove it. But if you want to reactivate it, you can go to the drop down shade and you'll see this uh, right here to turn it back on. Now, if you wanna get rid of this feature entirely, what we'll have to do is go up to settings and then we have to go to our smart function settings and turn it off. In terms of the home screen layout, it's pretty familiar for LG. We can swipe all the way to the right to get to Smart Bulletin, which is sort of a smart aggregator of things like your health and fitness data, calendar, music, and much more. And you can turn this off if you want. So if you go up to settings, you can rearrange those categories, turn some of them off, download new ones, or just turn the entire feature off. 
Now, if you miss the app drawer, there is a secondary launcher you can select. So if we go to settings and go up to display and go to home screen, we have the option to select different launchers, which includes home plus the app drawer. So now we have the app drawer, which is all nicely arranged in folders, and we have several options up here, so we can sort them differently, hide certain apps, or arrange apps by manually dragging and dropping them. To edit the home screens and the apps, just tap and hold and you get to the editor, which allows us to uninstall the apps that we can uninstall, or just reassign different home screens or reposition them. We can also go to our widget panel to install new widgets or just uninstall the ones that are on the home screen. In terms of the app selection here, so if we go ahead and delete an app that we can delete, such as the Facebook Messenger app, this tells us about app trash. So we're going to click close and we have an app trash icon in the lower right corner. This takes us right to this app trash utility, which basically allows us to restore apps within 24 hours. After that, they, they just automatically delete. So if I want to restore that app goes right back to the home screen but I'll have to put it back in its spot. Under home screen settings this is where we can select from a different launcher so again if you want to restore the app drawer or if you want to go with easy home which simplifies the interface. Of course we have our wallpaper selection and we have wallpaper motion so the wallpaper moves as you tilt the screen so if you want you can turn this off if you prefer. We have different screen swipe effects and we have icon shapes. So we have two options rounded squares which unifies all of the icons or you can go with the original format. We can also choose to sort apps alphabetically or by download date. We can change the grid layout. So 5x5 is default, but you can select a wider spacing if you prefer. This also allows us to hide certain apps. So if you can't uninstall the apps, you can go here to hide them instead. There's a few other things to know about on the home screen. So of course, you can swipe down from the top to get to your notification sheet and our quick setting toggles and widgets. Now, if you swipe down on the home screen, anywhere on the home screen, you get to this search interface. So again, let me just show you that. This brings up search. So this is a universal search. So I can search the device, Google, or other resources. So for example, if I type in Nest, this will search for the app or emails related to Nest or websites. But I also have some app suggestions up top. So recently accessed apps will be right here. Some contacts, messages, Gmail, gallery items, and websites. So again, everything I frequently use will appear right here. Now this is powered by Android 7.1, so we have quick actions on apps. So if I tap and hold on the apps, you'll see those pop up here, such as a new tab within Chrome, or if I go to the Messages app, this will also expand out to the recent messages, or I can start a new conversation. I can also turn some of these quick actions into apps on the home screen, so I can drag and drop them like so. Some third-party apps are actually making really good use of this feature. So for example, if I go to the Nest app, I can drag and drop this to the home screen. So now I have quick access to my deck camera without having to dig through the app to get to it. When it comes to the folders, we have some editing options. So we can change the name and the color of the folder. So if you want to go with pink, or you can add new apps by hitting the plus icon. So you can go ahead and select as many apps as you want instead of tediously dragging and dropping them to the folder. In terms of these quick settings up top, when you expand it out, you can see the first six are presented up top along with a brightness slider. But as soon as you expand it out, you can see it sort of changes up. We lose the brightness slider, but we gain screen sharing, sharing and all of the currently active quick toggles. Now if you want to modify this just go to edit. This allows us to turn off some of those widgets such as the brightness slider, screen sharing, and file sharing but you can also turn on the volume slider. So if we click done here now we have a volume slider in addition to our brightness slider. This also gives us quick access to all of the volume controls for each individual function. This also allows us to edit all of these quick toggles. Most of them have been turned on by default but if you want to turn some of them off or just get rid of them, just drag and drop it to this blank space below, but you can add as many as you want. We also get something called Comfort View, which warms up the display and strips away the blue light, and you can customize this. Tap and hold, and you can change the intensity of the blue light filter, or you can also turn this to black and white, or you can schedule this. Now, if you have a set of headphones connected, you can turn on or turn off the Hi-Fi Quad DAC tuning. Now, if you tap and hold, this will actually take us to that control panel. You can see that this will automatically adjust the uh, audio to the speakers that are connected to it, or to the headphones that are connected to it. And you can change the volume. We can also change the digital filter. So you can change it from short, sharp, or slow. We can also manually adjust the balance, or we can select a different sound preset or customize it. And any time this feature is turned on, you'll see it indicated in the status bar. There's actually quite a bit of room within the dock. So if you want to add more apps to the dock, all you have to do is drag and drop them like so. You can add up to seven apps at maximum.
Naturally, with Android 7, we have the Google Voice Assistant, so just tap and hold to get to it. We also have our recent apps, and the viewer is pretty conventional here, nothing terribly different. It's very smooth and responsive. There's a few features to point out here, so of course we can clear all of this out. But we also have side-by-side -side windowing or split screen. So for apps that support side-by-side -side windowing or the scaling needed for it, you'll see this little icon right next to it. So if we tap on this, I can open up Twitter on the top of the screen and select another app down below. So now I can resize it like so, if I can resize it, uh, and then I can interact with both apps simultaneously. Now if I want to select a different app down below, what I can do here is go to the home screen and open up something else. So let's go to the Nest app. So now I can look at my Nest camera while browsing my Twitter feed. Alternatively, I can also hit this key to expand it out and I can select another recently accessed app or if I tap and hold, this will minimize the previous apps and just take me back to the top app. Another feature familiar to other LG devices is the option to pin apps. So for example, if you don't want apps to close out when you click clear all, you can go ahead and pin them. So now if I hit clear all, you can see that everything except those two apps were cleared. You can customize this layout. To do that, we're going to go to settings and under display, we're going to go to home touch buttons. So we can change up the button combination. So we can have four buttons at once and we have these three options we can add. But of course, we can also rearrange these. So for example, if I want the notification shade, I can go ahead and add that button or I can rearrange them like so. So if you want the home button all the way to the left, you can do that. So in terms of what the notification shade does, this just basically brings down the notification shape without having to reach toward the top to get to it. Now in terms of Capture Plus, again, this is a screen grab feature which is across this device in many different areas. So again, I can do a screen grab here and then mark it up if I want. And I also have Q Slide. So if I go to Q Slide here, I haven't seen this in a bit, but we have a few Q Slide apps that are sort of windowed apps. So if I go to the Calendar app, I get this little pop out, which I can change the transparency of, and then I can also resize it. But again, it's not a terribly useful uh, utility, but it's here if you're a fan of it. We can also change up the color. So if you prefer black, we can go ahead and apply that. So now we have a black bar in a full screen app. So if you're on the home screen, it just matches the wallpaper. But if you go to an app, you can see it's black instead of white. In terms of the app selection, we do get a few things worth pointing out. So we have an HD audio recorder. So we have an array of microphones and that quad deck, which can be used for uh, recording high-end audio quality. So we can select from different presets, such as concerts. We can adjust this. You can see the mic input levels. We have a custom EQ right here and much more. Under smart cleaning, we have basically a device health report. So we can see our internal storage and memory, and we can optimize our device to free up some space. You can see your battery usage. You can enable one of the battery saver modes, and there's quite a few of them. So you get a preview of how much these modes uh, expand your battery life. And then we also have uh, the option to test the hardware, which is kind of interesting. So you can basically test all of these things by hitting test all or individually. So digging into this camera app, the first things you'll see up top is the option to switch between the main camera and the wide angle camera. You can see it makes a big difference. We also have this zoom slider. So I'm gonna go back to the main camera here. So I can zoom in or out very precisely, but if I zoom all the way out, this will actually flick on the wide angle camera pretty smoothly. As always, we get a ton of manual modes, especially on this camera. Some of the more popular ones include manual mode for both the camera as well as video. So in terms of the camera, we have the horizon line. We can manually adjust the shutter speed, ISO, focus, white balance, and much more. This also shows us the audio input levels for both the left and right channels, and we can see the bit rate for video. Another option that becomes available under the manual video mode is the option to save your footage as LG Synlog. So this gives you a little more post-production control, but this does not work with the wide-angle lens. One of the other new modes is Syn Video, which has a few unique effects. One of them is point zoom. So what I can do here is manually select a point to zoom in and then use the slider to zoom in and out, and I can change the speed. So no matter where you point on the screen, it zooms in on that spot, which is kind of a unique effect. We also have the option to apply different filters. Uh, so for example, if you want to add these more creative filters that more closely resemble professional production, you could do that. So some of them include documentary style, scenery style, and much more, and you can change the vignetting or the strength of the effect. So when you're gaming, we have another new feature with LG. So if you bring in the navigation bar here, you can see we have this other control that pops up here, which gives us some game controls. So we can take a break, take a screenshot, 
or adjust gaming graphics. So if we go to adjust gaming graphics, we can change the resolution or frame rate. So if we go ahead and max this out and click apply, you can see how this affects the game. So definitely with the game maxed out, you can see an improvements in terms of the graphics and it's able to keep up just fine with it. In terms of what take a break is, so if you click this, this will actually dim the display and lower the resolution to save battery life until you're ready to play again. When it comes to the settings, there's always a lot to explore here. So by default, we have this tab view, so we can tap on these headers to jump to different sections, or you can select list view. Alternatively, you can just search for whatever you want. In terms of some interesting settings, so if we go to Bluetooth, this is a Bluetooth 5.0 device, so you can connect to multiple devices at once and stream audio to separate devices using separate media. So it's kind of nice. You, of course, you also have increased range with Bluetooth 5.0. There's always a lot to take a look at under display settings, but what I'm going to focus on here is app scaling. Now because this is an extra tall screen, some apps have to be scaled to the screen and that can be done automatically. So you can see the apps that support it, such as Chrome. But if you prefer, you can lock this into 16 by 9. So if I go to Chrome now, you should see black bars at the top and bottom instead of filling up the screen. We can also manually adjust the screen resolution from 2880 by 1440 down to 2160 by 1080 or 1440 by 720. This will save some battery life, but some of the power saving measures will also do this automatically. Now, there is a difference here, especially if you go to the lowest resolution, but it's not terribly dramatic, but it does look a bit softer. We also have lots of options for the screen color. So normal is default, but you have best for movies, photos, or web, and then you can customize this as well. So if you go to settings, you can really customize the color temperature as well as the RGB levels. We also have the option buried under here to enhance the video color. So if the video player supports full screen mode, this will show the video in a brighter, more vivid color. There's a few other features sort of buried under advanced settings such as knock on. So if you double tap, at the status bar, this will actually lock the screen. We can also enable the mini viewer. So if you want a one-handed mode, all you have to do is enable this feature right here, and you can swipe on the uh, Android navigation keys to minimize the window to the left or right, depending on the direction you swipe. So you can manually resize it like so, or if you want to exit, just hit the X key. This is also LG's first Daydream VR device. So we have a few VR settings. So we can choose to view VR with less blur, which is recommended, or less flicker, so we have two options. Under lock screen, this is where we can customize the shortcuts on the lock screen. So in addition to the ones that are here by default, we can also add new ones or change the default icons. So it's not very often where I can say that this is a home run device from its feature set to the way everything works to its design, display, camera system. It's easily my favorite Android smartphone this year and this would be my daily driver if it was a final review unit. But of course, we're gonna have to wait for that to come in. All right guys, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know with a like and I'll see you again in my next one.